Um, yep. Do you think we're setting expectations too high for him this season? Yes. Okay. Very clearly, yes. Um, I think so. There's a couple things going on. Um, and, and when there's various like causes, it's hard to sort of pinpoint or or say which one is the one specifically, uh, or even assign blame. But I think even despite what Nick says, I don't think his ankle's hundred mm-hmm. percent. I don't think his ankle's like eighty percent. Right? There's games. There's instances in each game now where guys are just blowing past them. And that's something that I thought at the start of the season when Scotty came in fresh, uh, he did a really good job of improving his his footwork and just being able to contain guys off the dribble and stuff. You can't tell me that he could stay in front of Kyrie Irving, but he now he can, suddenly he can't stay in front of like, you know, Josh Christopher and Tari Eason and and Pat Williams and these kind. By of the guys. way, show us the Asian fan at the game that we saw you saw with a Josh Christopher. Rockets jersey. Yeah, he had a Jalen Green jersey on, and he took that off and then put on a Josh Christopher jersey. Oh, oh man, man, that's that's dedication right there. Yeah. But um, because <laughs> what are you really a fan of? <laughs> no, but that's all the Chinese fans from the Yao Ming era. I guess that so, have yeah. remained. Uh, that's fair. That's true. And we know you like wearing the color red as well, so you can relate. Well, you know they got our colors, but um, yeah, like he's. I, I think. Um, Sorry, I keep disrupting your basketball talk. That's okay, man. I get it. Uh, it's not your favorite it's topic. Um, damn rockets, man. With, with Scotty, it's just like we are expecting him, to, obviously, to 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 really step up with the yes. scoring. But like, the, the, there's the ankle thing, which I, despite what Nick says, I, I just don't think he's 100. percent That's mm-hmm. that's okay though, right? Um, I think there's another portion of it, which is just like, has he ever been a dominant scorer at different levels? Because if you go back to the scouting report coming out of college it wasn't that like scotty some sort of takeover score yeah zero level score okay that was yeah. one rep- one scotty report called him a zero level score right clearly he can score but and i think the first year that's part of the big surprise and why it felt so cool to see him attack because it was like wow he definitely can score and he has like real advantages but wasn't a dominant score in florida state wasn't a dominant score in high school either right he always played on those teams with guys who can really really score and really really get after it and so I think he's more built towards the sort of like complementary role because that's what he's more familiar with. Uh, and I think in the NBA, he's actually trying to take the next step to become more aggressive and actually change his nature as a, as a player. So there's there's that portion, there's the ankle injury portion, and then there's just a the portion of like, does he seem as spirited as he was in previous seasons? Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, is because I, I see like him complaining to the officials quite a few times. I see you a know? lot of the complaining, yeah. Reminds you know, me of like Jason Tatum in Boston. They would do that a lot, especially last year, right? Yeah. Remember when Ime Udoka was there and that was like a point of emphasis? Okay. So, you know, I think those are all really good points. I just asked the question because I feel like how we talk about Scotty is is really just predicated on what expectations are we putting on him in year two, right? Because well, I, if you're I, respecting him, like you talk about like OG yeah. being like, you know, an alpha. You know, Fred's obviously an alpha as well. Wow, we're going to have three alphas. <laughs> remember the <sighs> three alpha era on the Bulls? Um, I do remember that. Shout out like, to uh, Rajon Rondo. <laughs> But is Scotty, is that what we expect from Scotty this season, especially with Pascal out now? And, you know, you've talked about Scotty taking on a bigger role, you know, as, as a creator, et cetera, et cetera, and all the skill sets that he has. Or are we supposed to just leave him to use this year to just continue to grow? Because those are very two different, very different sets of expectations for a player, right? Yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, I think... I think it's probably closer to the latter. Okay. I think fans just want to see the former, where okay. he just takes he takes the next step, continues to make another big jump. Um, and I think that's what everyone hoped for. That's what everyone sort of talked themselves into. But, like, are you seeing something tangibly different from Scotty's game this year than I explained last year? No, I feel like I feel like a lot of games, he's just trying to, like, find what his role is. Yeah, no, that's You fair. know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Like it's but like, he had those moments last season as well. Yeah. It's just that last season, when Pascal went down, when mm-hmm. Fred went down, when OG went down, because the Raptors had injuries to all these guys last year, Scotty would then elevate his game and mm-hmm. score a lot. Like, his first breakout game was second game of the year. Pascal was out. He had 25 points in, in TD Garden, and they booed the, 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 the Celtics off the court. Yeah. You know? That's when I was like, I'm a Scotty fan for life. <laughs> He's <laughs> you a do that? stan. 